Hey everybody, welcome to Code a Responsive Website with Bootstrap 3. This video is called Coding the General Layout and Structure. In this video we are going to begin coding some HTML. So open up your code editor and open your My Website folder, or you may have named it something different, but basically it is the Starter Assets folder just copied into our own fresh empty template. And basically what we're going to code is the general layout. So I'll show you what that is. Open your index.html file. This is what we're going to be working with. This is our index file. This is where our web page will be written. And just to show you exactly what we're going to write, in the code chunks folder number four, we're going to code a layout. So if you don't want to write this out by hand, you could just copy and paste this. But like I said, this isn't going to teach you anything if you just copy and paste all the code chunks. They're just there for reference, just to check your work and make sure you've written everything right. If you have any bugs, you can refer back to these to make sure that you've um, properly written your HTML, closed all your brackets, and your closing tags, and so on and so forth. So anyway, let's get started. Right here on line 26, there is a flag that says your code goes here. Remember to remove this comment once you've started. You do not need it. So we're just going to remove that, and this is where we're going to start typing our HTML. So let's start by adding a div with the class of container and an ID of main. Remember to close that div. And next we're going to add the div for the nav bar. So div, give it the class of nav bar and nav bar fixed top. Those are bootstrap three classes. Basically what this does this class will give the div uh, the styles of the navbar that are pre-styled in the bootstrap CSS and navbar fixed top. That's going to stick our navbar to the top of the web browser and it will stay there as you scroll down rather than it just getting lost up at the top of the website having to scroll back up to see your navigation menu. So remember to close that div. I like putting end comments to let you know that it was the end. This is the closing div for this uh, because once you start writing a lot of code in between these divs, you can get confusing if you're not tabbing properly. Even if you are tabbing properly, it can be hard to find out and realize what these divs, these closing div tags are for. And next we're going to code the div for the carousel. So div class of carousel and also give it the class of slide. Those are bootstrap uh, classes. This is going to give the element the carousel styles. It's going to work like a carousel. And slide is going to have the carousel items slide. This allows it to animate. And we need to also give it an ID. We're going to give that an ID of my carousel. Close that div and my carousel. Next we're going to add what is called a row. So div class of row, close that div. In Bootstrap 3, a row essentially behaves as the parent element that contains a number of columns. So this would be considered, this whole row is literally a row the CSS class of row. And in that, you would put your CSS columns or your bootstrap three columns. So you could see here as an example, row closes here and it has column large one and it has 12 of them. So you can see there are 12 single column grids within this row. And just as a quick note in bootstrap three, if you want to use columns, so for example, th this is 12 single columns, this is 8, and this is 4, 4, 4, and 4, 6, and 6, depending on if you want you know, your website layout to have two half sections, or you want thirds, or you want a larger section and a sidebar, or you want, for some crazy reason, just single columns like this, you need to put them within a row, and they always need to add up to 12. You'll probably notice that 8 and 4 is 12, 3, 4 is 12, 6 and 6, 12, and 12 ones is obviously 12. So you need to have them add up to 12. 
If you want to understand more about Bootstrap 3 grids, just navigate to boot, uh, getbootstrap.com slash CSS and click on grid system. And you can learn all about everything you could do with the grid system. It's pretty wild. So I would totally recommend looking into this after this course to get more familiarized with how the grid system works. It's pretty powerful. So anyway, back to our code. So we just added a row. And later on, we're obviously going to be adding some columns within that. But I need to give this row um, also an ID because I'm probably going to be selecting that later with CSS. And I don't want to just select all the rows. I just want to select this specific row. And this row is big callout. This is where we're going to have the big callout. So I'm actually going to change this to big callout and big callout. So I know that that's the ending div for that element. All right, up next, we're going to add another div, the class of row and give it the ID of features heading. And that. And remember to save your work always and often. I've gotten in the habit. So if I'm writing some HTML, for example, I just saved. I don't wait until I write a whole bunch of it to save. You don't want to lose your work. It sucks. Anyway, up next, we have another row. And this row is going to have the ID of features. Save your work. We're going to add another row. And this row is going to have the ID of more info. Save your work. Next one. One more row. Give this one the ID of more courses. Close your tag. And last but not least, outside of the container, add a footer tag, an HTML5 footer tag. The reason why I put the footer outside of the container is because this container is also a Bootstrap 3 feature. The class of container is a wrapper that centers my website in the middle of the browser and it cuts off the edges. So if you were to look at the final website, you can see that the footer isn't actually restrained within the container. So the container goes within, is within this box here and the footer goes outside of it. And so, so as to not have the footer be chopped off on the edges here, I want it to be full width like this. And to achieve that, we just have the footer outside of the container. And you might be wondering why is the header, like why, why is the nav bar within the container, but it still is full width? Well, the reason is because this is positioned fixed. So it doesn't actually behave as it would if it was within its parent, which is the container. It actually just behaves as if it was outside of it and it doesn't have any sort of constraints. So that's why you're able to have it be full width and just sticky to the top like that. And what I like to do, just because there's going to be a lot of HTML in here, I'm going to space these out after each of these closing div tags, just so I can see a little bit better. That looks good. Let's even go like that. Save your work. And so now this container this layout should look a lot like code chunk layout. In fact, it should look identical. So that's it for this lecture. And in the next one, we're actually going to be diving into the nav bar so we can get this one coded up. So I'll see you there.